Hey guys, here I am again talking about my outdoor wood boiler. Um, haven't really seen too many people on YouTube go through what they have for the installation part of how they're heating their home uh, with their outdoor wood boiler. Uh, what I have here is a 500,000 BTU. Um, I think it's a, uh, you can get the model number on there for you. What does that to say? It's uh, Brace Tech or something like that. Um, I got it off Amazon. Uh, it's been in operation for two years now. Um, 500,000 BTUs is more than enough for what I'm using it for. Uh, I'm heating a, I'd say if you added the basement and the garage, we probably have a little over 4,000 square feet. Um, what I wanted to go over today is just how I have the sequence of operation with my outdoor stove interlocked with my um, baseboard oil boiler setup. Um, so basically the way I wanted it set up was if the outdoor stove um, goes below a certain temperature in that loop, I want my oil boiler to kick on. Uh, that way if I don't get home in time or wherever I am, um, the house will always have heat and my wife doesn't have to play around with the uh, you know, the stove at all. Um, so I'll show you how I did it. It's uh, fairly simple. I believe in kissing it, keeping it simple, stupid. Um, sometimes you can, you can uh, overthink something and I definitely did in the beginning. Um, I do heating and air conditioning for a living and uh, you know, I was thinking about using a, a Tecmar controller and I didn't need to go that crazy. So what, what I have here in front of me here is these, this is the supply and return lines coming in underground into my basement um, at the junction box. I'm feeding 100 amp service out to my uh, garage that's detached from the house. Um, so I have the, this here is the supply line coming in. It's an inch and a, inch and a quarter line, PEX. Um, it's sleeved through a Schedule 43 inch pipe and I spray foamed it there. Um, with these lines, it's very important that you have really good uh, insulation around them. That's that's where you can really burn a lot of wood up if you don't have uh, the right efficiency, with the right R value, and the right heating, um, the right insulation around the, the, the pipes. Um, so what I have here, uh, actually this is the supply, sorry. Um, I have a, a Honeywell clamp on uh, Oxstat on this loop. I have it set to, I think I have it set to 100 degrees. So this is an open closed loop system. That sounds kind of funny, but it's it's an open system, but it, it is its own loop. It's not it's not attached to the house. As I just showed you, it goes through a, a 500,000 BTU uh, honeycomb heat exchanger. So what this uh, Aquastat does is it, uh, I have it set for 100 degrees. So if the, if, the, if the temperature in that loop goes below 100 degrees, then what it does is, um, is it closes a set of contacts on a rib relay, um, which I have right up here, uh, junction box. I pop the cover off just so you can see. Uh, I don't leave it that way, but um, I have two on here. I had originally had a different setup. I had a, a Buderis wood boiler in my garage, and that was a closed loop system, and it, it tied directly into the house. I don't use it that way anymore. So I do have a burner relay, which does, uh, and a pump relay. Um, the pump relay is, is is on, but it's not taking the pump out on the the indoor loop it's it's disconnected however the burner relay is connected um, so when that aquastat over there on the loop when it uh, when it closes a set of contacts it it uses the uh, contacts inside this I forgot you know it's not I don't I forgot in my head how I did it with uh, normally open and normally closed um, but it uh, either opens or closes when that when that aquastat over there closes it opens the normally uh, open set of contacts on that relay, which are that go down in here to my Aquastat uh, on the pump. I have everything labeled, but basically all it's doing is it's switching open the circuit for the burner, uh, which allows the call for heat on this boiler to be canceled out. However, it does allow the pump to continue running in operation. Oh. Sounds like my clothes are done drying. Um, so that way the zone valves will still work. We're still using the 24 volts from, the, from this uh, fan center relay. And when there's a call for heat from a, from a uh, thermostat in the house, the zone valve will open up, the pump will kick on, and, and it will flow heat through the, through the house. Um, so again, if the temperature in that loop goes below 100 degrees, um, then the circuit opens up, the contacts up here on the rib relay close, and it allows the burner to kick right in. So there's always uh, a source of heat that's uh, running in the house. Um, Tied with this though, this video I wanted to show you, I just put a draft inducer motor. I, I have uh, prior other videos. Um, I do have gauges on my supply and return so you can see what your delta is across that heat exchanger. Uh, right now, as you can see, hopefully I can get up in there. 
we are maintaining 180.3 degrees. Uh, I have a uh, well style aquastat adjustable out in the boiler itself with a five degree differential I have it set at. Um, so we're, we're maintaining 180.3 degrees. I have it set to 185 outside, so there is a little bit of a drop, but that's, that's nothing. So as you can see, we have about a 20 degree delta across this heat exchanger. Um, so that's great. We're, we're putting 180 degrees to the house and we're sending back 160. So we rejected 20 degrees of uh, hot water into the home. Um, the house right now is comfortable. It's about 10 degrees outside here in New Jersey. It's a, it's a, it's a cold, cold uh, week, um, but the boiler's doing its job. And that's what I wanted to show you. That draft inducer motor is really kicking butt. Um, I have yet to be able to maintain 180.5. The last time I loaded the stove was about, uh, I'd say around two o'clock this afternoon. And uh, it's about 9, 9 p.m. now, and we're still at 180.5. So that motor is really uh, helping my efficiency, and it is keeping me at a steady 180 degrees without dropping around on that differential. It's, it's maintaining, um, which is great. It's keeping those coals nice and hot. It's not uh, dropping in temperature and I'm really, really happy with it. So if I can help any of you guys out there with any questions with interlocking your outdoor stoves to your indoor loops, uh, however I can. Um, again, I didn't go through this either. When there is a call for heat, it does also do this. It, 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 uh, the, it opens the burner contact on the oil boiler, and then I have a Taco um, motorized zone valve on the, what you would see as the, called the supply of the boiler. It's coming off the boiler here. This is the supply. It's going up and it's going to feed all your zones. Uh, so what happens is when there's a call for heat out from the outdoor loop, that zone valve closes. And then this zone valve here, that becomes the new supply going uh, into the, that becomes the return water from the house going into the uh, heat exchanger that I had, I had up here. Goes through the heat exchanger, um, comes back out of the heat exchanger. That zone valve right there also opens when there's a call for heat on the outdoor boiler and then it goes back out to the house. Um, and that's basically how it works. It's pretty, it's pretty simple. She's using a couple zone valves, a couple relays, and one aquastat. And uh, when the call for heat is lost um, from the outdoor boiler and the, uh, the loop goes down below 100 degrees, then that valve then opens, that valve closes, and that valve closes. And the outdoor loop becomes its, its own, and the indoor loop takes over. So. Um, it sounds kind of complicated, but if uh, you know you're looking to do this, then you must uh, you must know what I'm talking about here. The one thing that is important that I must share with you guys is if you have any zones, whenever you're going to install one of these um, heat exchangers, this, if you're going to do this type of setup, you need to make sure that there's no zones before uh, your heat exchanger. It has to all they have to all tie in after. So if, as you can see, the one zone to my house was on the return side when the boiler. Uh, outdoor stove kicks in it was on the return side so I was only feeding you know return water to that zone I had to cut it cap it and then I had to move it down through this wall um, and I had to move it and tee it in over here so it's now on the supply side otherwise you're gonna feed that zone 100 and whatever this is here you're gonna feed it 162 degree water so uh, that doesn't really uh, suffice when it's uh, 10 degrees outside so all right, guys. Sorry for the long drug out video, but I hope this helps some of you guys. Um, it's a it's a nice way to do it, and it's a, a neat way to do it. So, any questions, please uh, you know reach out to me. Um, again, I'm not interested in any of the uh, the trolls out there that uh, you know want to critique my work. I think it's a beautiful job. I do this stuff for a living, and uh, you know I'm always tweaking this stuff. So please keep your uh, stupid comments to yourself. And if you guys are have any questions, then please comment, question, send me a message. Talk to you soon. Thanks.